So recently there was an, uh, an election in Brazil uh, where a far-right uh, candidate has uh, unfortunately won. Now, Western reaction to this uh, is very interesting. It turns out that, uh, according to The Intercept, corporate interests and the business press are super, super excited about what could be a fascist presidency. Great. Um, now, they apparently are uh, incredibly happy about uh, his positions on markets for an investment. Uh, not only that, but cutting corporate taxes and privatizing public services. In fact, Owen Jones of The Guardian writes, Big business sees a victory of Brazilian fascism as a massive investment opportunity. Now, if that doesn't kind of speak to the ills of corporate media, I don't know what does, man. Now, the CBC, let me go uh, back here to the CBC. That's uh, Canada. So, you know, you would think the Canadian take on this would be, you know, largely uh, dismissive. I should say dismissive of fascism, right? Uh, but according to The Intercept, while highlighting Bolsonaro's, um, by the way, that, that is a new president, Jair Bolsonaro. Uh, hopefully I said that right. I probably said it wrong. Uh, while highlighting his homophobic, racist, and misogynist statement, the CBC gushed that his win over Workers' Party candidate Fernando Haddad could mean, quote, fresh opportunities for Canadian companies looking to invest in the resource-rich country thanks to his strong commitment to open markets. Oh, great, wonderful. Hey, look, uh, Brazil just elected a fascist, but you know what's great? Markets. For Christ's sakes, man. Uh, wow. Now, there's more. Anna Prusa, a former U.S. State Department official who researches Brazil for the Wilson Center, which is a Washington, D.C.-based firm, said, quote, It could be a good time to be a mining investor in Brazil. Hey, look, mining investment. Great. Let's now invest in Brazil, despite, again, Brazilians electing a fascist. Now, I'm going to go into uh, why I'm saying he's a fascist and going into some of his terrible remarks. Uh, you know, CBC mentioned that he made homophobic, racist, and misogynistic statements. I'll go into those because those are really, really crazy. Um, but first... There's more. As The Intercept reported last week, American business elites were positively giddy at the prospect of a Bolsonaro victory, which one executive said could be a, quote, bullish opportunity for us. Yay. Enthused by Bolsonaro's selection of right-wing university of Chicago-trained financier Paulo Gaudet, uh, Guedes to craft his economic agenda, Investors are, quote, more than happy to overlook the authoritarian impulses and violent promises the intercepts Lee Fong and Zhu Jelani had wrote. Geddes has promised to sell off state assets, cut public pensions, revise the tax code, and deregulate the economy. Another Bolsonaro advisor, Naban Garcia, told Reuters that the administration would slash fines for farmers who violate environmental rules in sensitive areas like the Amazon. So now, of course, we're putting the Amazon rainforest in peril. But hey, you know what? Uh, Wall Street firms and American corporations, they're going to be able to go in and make some money off Brazil. Yay. In fact, as soon as Bolsonaro won the first round of election, which, by the way, is against 13 other people, corporations couldn't contain themselves. CNBC had reported that Brazil stocks outshine the rest of the world ahead of Sunday's election. Uh, and following, of course, Bolsonaro's 10-point victory, stocks continued to skyrocket as investors cheered. Now, Bolsonaro, look, he, he again, they mentioned that he had won by 10 points. Uh, he was against another guy, somebody who was uh, uh, not a very well-known social democrat. Um, the person that he was originally going to go up with went down on some mysterious corruption charges. Weird. Weird. So there's a lot of questions going on. Uh, the man, um, I believe Lula, uh, 
Last name, blanking on the first name as usual. Terrible with names. Um, he actually was the person that was most likely to win the election. And, oh, look at that. He got removed and arrested for, uh, for corruption charges by right-wing courts. And the person that they got to uh, replace him, Haddad, just wasn't popular enough, did not have enough time to get his name out there. And so now Brazil has a fascist. Lovely. And again, you keep wondering, why do I keep calling him a fascist? Why do you call him a fascist, Jeff? What has he done that's fascistic? Well, apparently, uh, he had said that he would be giving carte blanche for the police to kill people. That's not the only thing. Jair Bolsonaro, according to Bloomberg, on Monday said, uh, he said the word uh, that Bolsonaro said the words investors really wanted to hear. Brazil's next president pledged to trim the deficit, pay down debts, and reduce the size of government after results showed him cruising to victory over Fernando Haddad of the left-wing workers' party. And of course, now let's get to the stuff that he's actually said. In 1993, he said, quote, I am in favor of a dictatorship, a regime of exception. Well, there he is. I'm in favor of a, dita a dictatorship, a military dictatorship. In 99, he also said, I'm in favor of torture. You know that, and the people are in favor as well. Boy, that starts to remind you of somebody that uh, we have in power here in the United States that says similar things. There's more. In 2002, uh, this is for LGBT rights. Uh, I will not fight nor discriminate, but if I see two men kissing in the streets, I'll hit them. Another one on LGBT rights. Uh, I would be incapable of loving a homosexual child. I'm going to act like a hypocrite here. I'd rather have my son die in an accident than show up with some mustachioed guy. For me, he would have died. And adds, if your son starts acting a little gay, hit him with some leather and he'll change his behavior. Mm, there's more. Uh, okay, look, that, that's older stuff, right? And he might be like, look, maybe the guy's changed. Right? Maybe he's not so extreme now. And maybe that's why he won the election. Maybe he was maybe he moderated. No. In 2016, he said of gender equality, quote, I would not employ a woman with the same salary of a man. But there are many women who are competent. I mean women, you know, competent, but I'm not gonna pay him the same as a man. That's ridiculous. Why would I ever do that? There's more. Uh and this is last year at an event, quote, beyond Brazil, above all, since we are a Christian country, God above everyone. It is not this story, this little story of secular state. It is a Christian state. And if a minority is against it, then move. Let's make a Brazil for the majorities. Minorities have to bow to the majorities. The law must exist to defend the majorities. Minorities must fit in or simply disappear. <laughs> basically sending the message, assimilate or else. Minorities must disappear. Yeah, I thought, I mean, look, uh, here in America, it's supposed to be, we protect the minority against the tyranny of the majority, which I guess in a lot of cases has been perverted. For example, the majority want background checks on, you know, uh, weapons, guns, uh, majority want healthcare, and we don't get any of that. But when it comes to the hateful stuff or the stuff that benefits corporations, well, then suddenly the majority opinion, uh, at least in Brazil, is respected. Great. Uh, now, not only that, there's more. He said, violence is combated with violence. Not good. Uh, he also had, uh, uh, during a live video address in a rally in Sao Paulo, uh, this is on October 21st of this year. He said, you will not have any more NGOs to quench your leftist hunger. It will be a cleansing never before seen in the history of Brazil. Ooh. Okay. That same address, he also said, you will see a proud armed forces which will be collaborating with the future of Brazil. You 
Patrohada, that's a, de a derogatory term for the Workers' Party supporters, will see a civilian and military police with a judicial rear guard to enforce the law on your backs. In case he wasn't clear about the cleansing, we will enforce the law on your backs. We'll step all over you. That's what he's saying. Hey, leftists, we're going to step all over you. I'm the new president of Brazil. What are you going to do? That's scary, man. So this is the guy whom the media like the CBC and the Wall Street Journal, as well as our corporations, are being super friendly with. Yeah, I know the CBC pointed out, well, I mean, he said a whole bunch of problematic tweets, but this could be an investment opportunity. You know, all th this is all so they can open up the markets, so they can access Brazilian resources, right? Which they cannot wait to exploit. I mean, who cares about women, LGBT, workers, rights? No, no, guys, there's money to be made. Money to be made. And here we have North American media basically trying to paint the bright side of fascism to their readers. Hey, at least we'll have open markets. Right. You know, there is no bright side to fascism. Again, if you voted for this guy and if you think that money is going to go to you, no, it's not. It's going to go to gigantic multinational corporations because that's who fascism serves. But here's the thing, right? Poor economic conditions, which were happening in Brazil. Uh, they were in the middle of one of their biggest recessions, right? Now, that ends up leading to fascism, and that's what we see here. Their response to this is, okay, well, let's elect the guy who says we're going to fix everything. And again, along with fascism comes blaming minorities and ironically using Christianity, which... If you read the Bible at all, it actually condemns material wealth to amass power. This is not a populist movement. So whenever you see uh, media here, establishment media saying, oh, he's a far right populist. No, no, no. You have to understand something. Populism is not right wing. There, there is no such thing as right wing populism. It is fascism. And here we have our media corporations aiding and abetting its rise. It is absolutely grotesque what is happening. There is fascism arising all over the world. And Brazil is just the latest example. If you think it can't happen again, it can and it has. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc. We're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYT Nation set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look. You know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron. Patreon.com slash TYT Nation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on. And you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media.